Folks, welcome back to So Bad It's Good, presented by Betches Media. Today, I am so pleased to have a couple that we fell in love with when we watched them fall in love with each other on Love is Blind Season 4. But guess what? Now, they've been married over two years, and they have their own family. And not only that, they just birthed a podcast. Yeah, that's right. They have a new podcast called Blind Love with Zach and Bliss, and it takes you everywhere. It takes you through their pregnancy journey. It takes you through their relationships. They have guests that talk about these kind of amazing topics. Um, it, I mean, it really is truly something for everybody in this show. So what do we do for any new podcast that they're gracious enough to come on the show? You go subscribe. You go to Apple Podcasts and Spotify. You hit that subscribe button. And then not only that, you give it a five-star review because we love Zach and Bliss. So you got to give them five stars even before you listen because we want to make sure other people find this show. Okay. So now all of that plugging is out of the way. We get to meet. Uh, You're good at it. You're very good at it. <laughs> we get to meet <laughs> Zach and Bliss. Uh, welcome to the show, you guys. I, I was just telling them, but I'll tell the audience is that I saw you guys and got to talk to you for a minute, the Us Weekly reality show stars of the year a couple of weeks ago, but it was so loud on that red carpet. And I was just wondering how bizarre are those situations for you where you live a very normal, like you built this amazingly normal life and then you're on a red carpet with all of these other <laughs> reality stars. What is that like for you? I, I feel like I'm like in party crashers or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love that we can kind of just like pop in and pop out, you know, like we love this kind of like quote unquote normal life that we've built for ourselves. And it, it's definitely weird. Like, I feel like I forget sometimes like how we met and like <laughs> we can turn on Netflix and see ourselves. Like I kind of just like forget about it sometimes, to be honest. It's so surreal at times. Well, I mean, you met in the most bizarre fashion that it's kind of, we're normalizing it now more and more is that if you don't watch Love is Blind is that you meet in the pods, you don't get to see each other. And there is so many intense scenarios that potentially would never happen in real life. And, you know, not that you monetize your relationship, but at the same time, you wouldn't have met each other without the show. Like, is it still weird to think about that our love story started with kind of this dramatic Netflix reality show? Yeah, it's, it's so wild. You know, you watch this stuff on TV and you seem like, okay, you know, they look like they're in love and, you know, good for them. But I don't know, going through it is something so different. And I think we'll always be able to really relate to the realness of these situations and stories because of how it ended up for us. But I'm, sometimes we look at each other, we're like, we met on a TV show. That's so <laughs> weird. We have a baby. And like this whole Are you telling your baby how you met one day? Like mom and dad <laughs> met in the pods and it was very, Nick and Vanessa Lachey were there and it was very intense. <laughs> yeah, she's going to be like, what? I was joking the other day, like she just has no idea like her who she is or like her situation and who we are. And it's kind of funny. And neither do our animals. Like it's just funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, first off, so you're you're you you're both parents now, and you do talk about, and we actually even watch in the podcast because there's video elements as well, is you know, watching you prepare to to give birth and all of these things and and now you've given birth, like what are the things that are blowing you away about parenthood that even though you read all the baby books, you talk to your mom, you talk to all of these people, what is blowing you away right now? I think the thing that you, you really will be surprised by is how strong you are. Um, because like, I think going in, I, I'd heard so many parents talk about the sleep deprivation. Yeah. And I had thought, like, there's no way the human body can't can't do that. <laughs> I've listened to a lot of sleep doctors. I'm like, there's no way, you know, how how are we gonna go weeks without, you know, consistent sleep? But we do it, you know, we do it. Your body just finds a way and uh you just sleep when you can and it <laughs> and it works. <laughs> but Bliss, are you finding the same for you? you? Know, definitely the sleep, but I think for me the the most powerful thing that's blowing me away is the love. You know, like I thought that I loved her when I was pregnant with her. You hear <laughs> about how this love is so great, but when you actually experience it, it, it literally takes my breath away every day. Like I love her more with each passing moment. It's wild. It's wild. 
<laughs> well, it's kind of like your the title of your podcast, Blind Love, which of course is love is blind, but also the love for your child. I mean, it's mm -hmm. already there and you don't even, you're getting to know your child. She's getting to find out who she is as she goes along. And I thought, wow, that's kind of this really deep title that I don't know if they've even completely thought out the ramifications of how much it means. And were you trepidatious in your podcast of continuing to let us the viewers or the listeners in on your actual very personal, very real life that is not in the pods anymore? Well, I would say first, we fell in love with our daughter before we ever saw her. <laughs> <laughs> Blind love. She was, she, by the way, she was in the I, ultimate pod. She was in Bliss's belly. Was. I, I talked pod. to her through a pod for nine months. <laughs> I'll tell you a story. When, when she was born, um, and Bliss and I had an agreement that if the nurses or doctors took her away, that I would leave and I'd make, you know, we'd never have her alone at any point from when she was born. And so she, she needed to be kind of, um, given some oxygen. Give, yeah, they need to give her some oxygen. She was having difficulties breathing initially. And I walked over and I leaned down as the nurses were kind of, sh you know, shaking her around and I'm sitting there, I'm like, it's okay, baby girl. And she stops and she looks right at me and she recognized my voice. Oh, oh my God. It was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. She knew who I was um, because I, I, you know, I talked to her in her mom's belly every day. <laughs> <laughs> you recognize your voice. It's very sweet. Um, I think that, you know, we're trying to find this balance of like still sharing our love story and our lives and like our journey through parenthood while also protecting our daughter and her privacy. So we're trying to figure out what that balance is. But we we also, I think, we're, we're making this kind of place for ourselves as being these really real people. Like we're, we want to be relatable. We're not going to sugarcoat things. We're not going to say parenting is the easiest thing in the world. And why is everyone, you know, why are people complaining I don't know about? who's, I don't know who's buying that. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, you even say in the pot, you know, like you, you highlight the complicated parts yeah. of life. Yeah. So I think we just really want to create a space where people can feel connected, not only to us, but to a larger community of people that are in relationships, people that are in love, people that are having challenges in love, people that are, you know, parents. So that's really our goal with this uh, podcast. I mean, I mean, is how is it going for you so far? I mean, is it is it one of those things of like, oh yeah, we're kind of learning to how to communicate what we want to communicate because it's not just your story. I mean, you had like a a guest on that was, you know, you're talking about really big things. The photographer mm -hmm. who who lost their arm in an accident. I mean, you, you know, you have guests as well. So what is that blend for you of you know your story, but also highlighting other people's stories as well? Yeah, I think the core of, of of the stories that we want to tell are stories about love and perseverance and what does that look like? And, you know, we, we tell our, our story weekly by just sitting down and, and recapping and talking about what's going on in our lives. But we we also want to tell other people's journeys of love and family and what that's looked like in their lives. And so, I mean, that's the core of it is just stories of love. Yeah. Um, you know, Love is Blind, obviously, a show that is kind of inherently based on love. And you've been together for two years. And what is that two years? I mean, it's hard to sum up two years in a minute. But what has this taught you that was so different than from being in that experience with cameras on you? When those cameras go away, what has that been like for you? And how how long did it take you to kind of come back to Earth and start being able to truly focus on each other? Yeah. I think for me, I was like, I couldn't wait for the cameras to to go away. It was kind of like a sigh of relief in a way, you know, <laughs> like we just get to fully be without people asking us questions and, you know, know, filming us. So for me, it was kind of just like a relaxed sigh. Like now we just get to be me and you and build our love and our foundation and our marriage. Um, so, and I'm, I'm really grateful for that time, that year that we had from when we stopped filming to when the show aired, because we were able to really just build our relationship normally without anyone knowing who we were. Um, and just have that time I think was so special and really important for us before the whole world had opinions about our marriage and everyone knew who we were. Yeah. You know, it's funny cause I hadn't really thought about that moment. Uh, the moment when all the cameras left because there was there was a moment where it was like this is your last interview yes. we're heading out 
And that moment, it, it did feel really special. It was just this, like, okay, now it's just us. Now, yeah. now we can just, we got through this and here we are. And like, I hope that, I hope that love is wine continues to use that formula of a year or a yeah, year, and a year. Half because that's so key for the married couples to just. And what, what you're speaking about, if the audience doesn't know is that they film these things and you get like a year and a half before they're ever released to the public. And it's really hard nowadays because we have so many internet sleuths so that they're always looking for clues and like, Oh my God, I think this girl's in his apartment. I can see the, like the tiling in the background. And so it's, it's gotten more and it's gotten more intense each season, but it is interesting because then by the time you get to the reunion, you guys have been together for a decent amount of time, but the audience hasn't really caught up to that. So we're either still enraged, we're in love with you guys. Like there's so many, the audiences are now like gladiators and like want to tear everybody apart, which has got to be wild for you guys as well. Yeah, it's wild to like, you live it and then you relive it a whole year later and it's like you said, it's fresh in everyone else's minds. It feels like everything happened just now for everyone else. So you're dealing with kind of all of those things that you kind of maybe <laughs> already closed in your own mind and healed from and like moved on from. So yeah. it's definitely not an easy thing to go through. Um, but yeah. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You were having to relive certain situations that we saw in season four. Does it reopen those wounds or does it just make you guys completely stronger because you know where you're at right now? I think it's a combination of both, honestly. Um, and I, I have a lot of sympathy for the, you know, the new cast each, each season, mm -hmm. because it is so overwhelming the amount of, uh, just attention, but you know, both, both praise and criticism that people receive. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's a lot, it's a lot for anyone to go through. I think my advice for any couple that gets married um, on love is wine that it hasn't aired yet tell each other everything like put it all out on the table don't let there be any surprises like zach and i did that where we were just very open about everything that we said everything that was done so that when it comes time you're not blindsided you're coming into it strong and united couple that's really important have you ever had a date after you got out of the pods where you just actually had a date where you were like, there was a wall in between you just to like to harken back to the old days. <laughs> like, let me just hear your voice. So fun. You know, we should do that. Sometimes we'd be sitting next to each other on the phone. And like one time after we kind of re-met up, we talked on the phone for like five and a half hours. So we kind of recreated a pod date essentially. Yeah. And it was, it was really, it was fun. And his voice, I think, will always be maybe one of my favorite parts about him. Yeah, know? I got to tell you, Zach, Zach's got an, Zach's got a, I do this for a little, Zach's got a really good voice. And I was, I was literally just sitting there. I was like, God, he just speaks so calmly and with such authority. And you kind of lean in to listen to what he says. I mean, Bliss, you have a great voice too. But I was like, Zach, you're yeah, really good Zach. on the mic. He is, honestly. And I, I love a good voice. So I tell him all the time, oh, I love his voice. So I, I agree. You guys are making me blush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys might not be able to see him if you're listening, but he's blushing potentially. Um, uh, I, was, I was talking to my girlfriend the other day and we were like, oh, if we ever had kids, I just want to make sure they're never on a reality show or they're an influencer. And I was wondering for your daughter, is that going to be a hard and fast rule of like, listen, in this house, you can never apply to be on a reality show. Oh, sorry about that. This I was like, whoa, we have a special guest daughter. star. <laughs> Hi. I'm not allowed to go on her, any reality. Her name is <laughs> this oh, no, is huge podcast. Have we have your cat. Oh, no. Blight. Blight. <laughs> oh, what, what have you done? No. Oh, no. Can you, did it, did it dip out? No, we're good. We're okay. back. Okay. 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 Put her down, babe. <laughs> I, I love, I love. That. Um, <laughs> so I think if Galileo, ever says mom and dad i want to go on a reality tv show we'll say only love is blind nothing else you'll let love is blind for galileo you'll say that's okay you know, oh, I, I, I absolutely would, yeah. i i think you know it's i really tr will trust her i already do trust her to you know be i'm gonna prep her we're gonna be going over that. We we will be practice quizzing. Uh, this is how. Uh, no, she's, I'm gonna give her. I'm gonna give her all the deets on how to like, you know, make sure the person on the other side of the pod is real. Oh gosh. You know. Well, you know the thing that I think is so special about Love Is Wine, and this may be true of other reality. TV Maybe mom shows. needs to prepare her for that. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, and it may be true of other reality TV shows, but you learn so much about yourself. You grow exponentially in this process, whether you end up married or not, whether you end up with someone you loved or not, whether you have like a bad edit, whether you are the villain, whether you're the hero, whatever, you learn so much about yourself. And that's such a priceless experience that I would have never had if you gone, you not having gone through that. Well, so Bliss, what did you, what did you learn about yourself? Even uh, taking yeah. Zach out of the equation. Yeah. I think I, I learned that I, have a very stoic face. <laughs> I thought it was very like emotional on my face, but on and as far as my character and stuff, I learned that I can rise above. You know, I think it really situation really challenged me to put any pettiness aside and put, you know, like, well, you got me, so I'm gonna get you, you know, type of thing beside. I really was able to be the, you know, quote unquote, the better person. And I wasn't always able to do that like in my 20s. Like this would have been a different person that you guys saw if I went on this show in my early 20s. Um, I can be very sassy and <laughs> I kind of reeled that in and it forced me to really become a better person and a more forgiving person. Um, my relationship with Zach really taught me about forgiveness and I wasn't maybe always the most forgiving person prior to the show, but I learned true forgiveness and I'm really a believer in like everything happens as it's meant to and us being apart and then coming back together. Like I had to put my, you know, pride aside. I had to truly forgive. And that was a beautiful gift that Zach gave me. Yeah. I think forgiveness uh, and, and grace would be the theme of our relationship, but uh, reflecting on it over the years, I've really kind of come to realize that, Forgiveness and grace are the lifeblood of a relationship. And if, if you don't have forgiveness and grace and you don't have the ability to give that, you really don't have the ability to maintain love. Yeah. And that, that, that is sincerely because it is inevitable within a relationship that someone at some point is going to hurt the other person. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and if you don't have the ability to show them grace and to forgive them, then you're your relationship is doomed. <laughs> and so le learning how to forgive and have grace um, continually uh, has been, I think, critical to the growth of our relationship. Yeah. And obviously there's boundaries, like certain things, but you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, obviously. Yeah. And, you know, you have expectations and standards and um, I think that that's something the concept of forgiveness and grace is something that is so sorry. I keep looking away by the way, from the camera. I'm, I'm like looking at the mic and then <laughs> I look, listen, I'm my, my, my blue eyes are intimidating. I get it. I get it. Yeah, I get it. No, no, no. I, I totally know. It's, it's, it's uh, I, listen, I'm just listening to your voice as well. I'm just like, God, that voice. No, I mean, what what you just said though, I'm like, you guys are my, uh, can you be my life coach? I mean, what, this is why you've got to listen to blind love because this is the kind of wisdom that you guys are spitting that I think people need to potentially hear because what you said is so true is that a relationship isn't all sunshine and roses and that real relationships go through things. And then it's how you deal with those things that can actually strengthen that overall bond because you guys are in it for a lifetime. You know, you're committed to a lifetime, which we don't really get to see good examples of on reality television. And Bliss, you spoke of that moment of forgiveness and 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 coming back. And and how real was that moment for you guys? And how much fear, Zach, for you that she potentially wouldn't come? I mean, like, no, seriously, that moment, like, how hard was that moment? Because yeah. there was so much invested with your hearts on both mm -hmm. sides. Mm -hmm. Was that like the worst? I would say it was one of the most, one of the most intense moments of my life. Um, I, part of me, you know, was like, I don't want to go meet him, but I, you know, really, I loved him so much. And I was like, okay, I'm going to like hear him out. Um, I was very nervous and anxious and I, you know, you don't know how you're going to feel. We haven't seen each other in person. Um, but honestly, and this is going to sound so cheesy and I am like so <laughs> against the cheesy, but look, it's just the truth. I love cheese. I um, love cheese. Yeah. <laughs> when our eyes locked, it was everything else kind of just fell away. It's one of those moments that you like see created on TV where everything blurs away and it's just you and that person. And that's genuinely, truly what happened. 
it was this undeniable, even like how like, you know, much crap I wanted to give him or how annoyed I was with him. I, I couldn't hide that connection. It was wild. Yeah, it's, I was completely blindsided going in. I <laughs> I did not <laughs> expect what happened when Bliss and I met to happen. At the at the point when we met, I came to meet with her to give her an apology. Uh, I brought a present that you didn't see. What was uh, the present? Uh, you want to go grab it real quick? Baby? It was. Oh. Um, it's right over should there. I go grab yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. So, I I Bliss had had given me um, this. A couple beautiful gifts in the pods. One was um, this book, Red Rising, um, that is one of our favorite books. And the other was this um, Rose Quartz Heart. And I kept that with me um, the whole time when I was in Mexico. And um, it just gave me so much peace. And I, I would look at it and I'd be like, you know, regardless of what you, what your fears, you should have always chosen her like I, I i thought that every day um and so i wanted to give her a gift um because i i felt like she had given me so much in the pods so i knew and i was like thinking like what could i give her what could i give her and then i looked at my favorite um bookends if you don't know what a bookend is that you know they put two book yeah. they hold books together come on come on you guys if you don't know what book ends in get off get off your phones you need to know what a book end is come yeah, on i was just saying that for the audience i know <laughs> yeah so uh, these two bookends that i had and, and i love them uh these two little moon men yeah i i really want to go to the moon one day like i love space um so he gave me these cute little moon astronaut men um bookends and bliss had <laughs> talked to me about uh -huh. wanting to go to the moon one day and it was almost like that. I knew when I, I saw that, I was like, these were meant to go to her. So I, I brought those with me. Um, and that that was all I was looking to do there. I, I truthfully was not. That was, oh, wait, that was all you were looking. Come on. You, you, no. you had the cool Gen bookends, like really? Gen genuinely. Yeah. I, I, I was not looking to get in a relationship and I wasn't looking to like, win bliss over like i was ready you know the thing was is i was ready to just live with my mistake and not try to like the, when i when i went in it was just like okay i'm i'm sorry that was all i was looking for it, you know i i was not thinking there was no part of me that thought we were gonna end up getting back together at that point um but when i walked in or when she walked in and i saw her and the connection that I felt, it was just electric. I mean, I, I, I just knew at that moment, I didn't know if it was going to work. Like I was, yeah, <laughs> a lot had happened. Um, <laughs> but I knew that I had to, I had to, I had to see if I, I could make something happen because I knew when we were in the pods, I was so close to proposing to her and I knew that she had everything I was looking for in a wife. And then when we met, I knew like, it, it's just like, you know, in your gut. And I was like, I, I the very first thought I, th I thought when I saw bliss was, uh Oh, <laughs> I think that might be my wife. Like I genuinely, that was when I looked at her, I was not thinking that going in. I mean, I would, dude, I was so messed up when I came in there. I was not yeah, in a was... Good, good state. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, I did Wait, not. So you, so you any of it leave that you leave that conversation that day, the both of you, and obviously you weren't expecting anything. What, like when you go home that night, what is going through your head? Like, what are the next steps of like, wait a sec, I do want to fully pursue this. Cause it seems like, especially Zach, from what you just said, that was really just blew your mind away that all of a sudden I'm looking at the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. What, I mean, do you go home and watch TV? Do you call your family? What do you do at that moment? I sent her a text. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay did you send her a text <laughs> what up <laughs> yeah. Yeah. what are you doing <laughs> now, <laughs> what you up to he really took accountability in his text which that's one thing about zach and i think the only reason why i was truly able to trust him and to actually say yes at the altar is because zach is always going to be maybe a little bit too honest you know, even in the pods, he was always extremely honest and he never tried to make excuses for what happened. He just took accountability for it. So.
Yeah. Uh, which is what you said. I mean, honesty and, 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 you know, little slip ups that actually build a stronger relationship in the end, which is, that's how you get a podcast folks. That's how you get a pod. You could be exactly where Zach and bliss are, but I was, uh, just for the audience, just, uh, in your, which by the way, the moon man, I was just thinking, think about the year 2055. I don't know. 2055 Galileo's on love is blind, but it's the first love is blind on the moon. Nice. Perfect. That is we literally Bliss's dream. That's I love <laughs> there with Vanessa and Nick to help host it. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, because then it'll be great because then we'll have to do the, the, the family meetup like we do in the later episodes yeah. and it'll be like a, a family reunion and we'll all, you know, it'll be great. <laughs> They're I like, come on. Us. No, I um, us. <laughs> Could you take us through what initially led you to even sign up for Love is Blind in the first place? You seem like two very sane people. You seem <laughs> like, wait, what are the, like, were you, were people scouting you? Did you see an ad somewhere? I know you've told this story before, but how did you wind up on the show in the first place? So I did not, I didn't apply. I got a voicemail um, about a documentary in Seattle. And I was like, I what? that's, probably we, I don't know. That's weird. So I didn't like call them back for like days. And I was like, I'm just interested to see what this is about. And they're like, Oh, have you ever heard of love is blind? I was like, what? Yeah. And for me, I was single. I was like, you know what? Let me just go and have this experience. I did not think that I was going to end up engaged, married, none of that. The probability of that to me was so small, not only from you know, the data that I already had, but just who I am as a person, like I'm a very logical person and this seems illogical how <laughs> this all happened. So I kind of went into it just like not really expecting anything to happen. Um, so that's how I ended up on the show. My journey was a little different. Yeah. I mean, I, I you had, begged to be on the show. <laughs> oh, oh no, 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 no. I had never heard of the show. I actually had no idea. I didn't know what it was. I, I, I hadn't really watched any reality TV at that point. Um, and I got, I got a message from someone that was th about a documentary that yeah. they were, they were looking for a documentary, it, but here's the thing, like how, how would they get my, you know, how would they get my information? Yeah. Like, well, yeah. what is it? I, I was, you know, at the time I was a lawyer in a small town, uh, Wenatchee, Washington. And, and it's like, you know, I think population like 80,000 people total. Um, so very, very small town in the middle of, I mean, not very, very small, but it's not a big place compared to Seattle or LA. <laughs> um, so what I suspect happened is my little sister had <laughs> nominated me to be on the bachelorette, uh, oh. this would be Michelle season. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so they had the bachelorette had contacted me and I had talked to them a little bit, um, never heard anything from them. Uh, and I was like, oh, OK. And then uh, I'm, I was at a point in my life where I really, you know, I had had everything figured out except for the, the most important part, which is love. And uh, I I was at a point where I I like was not finding the person that I was looking for where I was living and I was traveling to Seattle like weekly on to like, you know, Tinder or Bumble or Hinge oh, or, you know, somewhere, <laughs> whatever, you know, whatever app. Uh, and it, it, the, you know, and it just was not working. Um, and I, 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 so I knew that I just needed to actually move to the city. Um, I, I felt like where I was, I needed to move to a big city and I was either going to move to Austin, Texas or Seattle. And, uh, the, I had, I had been contacted, um, by love is blind. And then I never heard from him again. And so I thought, you know, like the bachelorette, they were just like, ah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the, the, when I, when I stopped hearing from them was they asked me this question. I remember they said, um, they're like, where's Wenanchi? Uh, it, it's like like is it like a suburb of seattle and i was like uh not really it's like when <laughs> she's like central washington like two hours away. yeah it's like two and a half hours away um and so that was the i i think they didn't realize i didn't live in seattle and uh but i was like hey listen i'm looking at moving 
So I, I'm planning on moving to Seattle, um, but I, I didn't hear from him. And I had actually just flown down to Austin, Texas uh, to go see if that's where I, you know, I was going to move. And uh, in the airport, I got a call. <laughs> yeah. And apparently um, there was someone who was in casting who just really, really liked me. And they told me that they had fought vehemently for me and they're like you to whoever yeah no i know who it was oh. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, you gotta but, send him a moon you gotta send him a, a moon man book in just to say thank you oh no but i did send him a <laughs> message after the fact uh and i said thank you so much um but i had no i had no idea going into I it feel like oh sorry go ahead no it's okay i talked a lot okay there. i was just gonna say i feel like <laughs> a lot of people that end up on this show it's not not so many people apply like i feel like it's like you said it's kind of like this crazy thing you know and i think not that many people i think i only know of two people that applied to be on the show alexa and brennan from season three i don't know if anyone about yeah them. i think I'm, i would imagine it gets harder every year because depending on the season and we're just finished season seven, you know, Washington, DC, and already, you know, like everybody's up in arms about certain couples. We have two couples that went to the altar. The reunion's going to be airing soon. And uh, like, sometimes you're like, is it worth it on this thing that already is such a bizarre idea? We've seen a handful of times when it's worked like you guys. And it's like for every Zach and Bliss, there are so many others that are just, is it worth it? I mean, like they're, you know, the, the, the guy with the beard last season, like just, uh, I forgot what his name is now, but he was like, everybody found out his whole history. He was dating somebody, you know, while he, you know, before he went in and it just seems like, man, the pool of people potentially is getting smaller and smaller. And there's only a few diamonds in the rough, like you guys, but I'm, I'm you know, I'm sure there's plenty of people out there, but just to say that you guys are kind of the shining example, does love is blind kind of like, do they send you emails every week of like, Hey guys, thanks for, <laughs> thanks for being the best of us. Well, I think there's lots of diamonds and I think there's actually, you know, there's a lot of, of, of love that's come out of love is blind. Um, and it, it's, I think it's easy humans. We have negativity bias, which is that we tend to remember things that are negative more saliently than we remember things that are positive. And similarly, our, our attention is, you know, you get a hundred positive comments and one negative comment and you remember that one negative and, yeah. and you're like, and you get five negative comments and now you've got, now you're thinking it's a swarm. This is actually a conversation that Bliss and I have had where, um, you, you know, at various times we've had people who have uh, sent us lots of negative messages. One of those of recently has been about, uh, you know, choosing not to, to show our daughter on social media or uh, show her face on social media. Um, but in, in the past, um, you know, I, I've looked at Bliss's comments and it'd be like, you know, like a thousand positive comments and like five negative, but those five negative. They, oh, they haunt, they haunt me. Even they, what I do, they, they, yeah, they like, I mean, I stay up late at night thinking about, and then I'm like, what if those ones are the right ones and everybody else is the wrong ones? I mean, I can't imagine what it's like on TV sharing such personal things. Like imagine having an opinion about somebody else's child and how right. they choose to raise it. That, that would blow my mind. It's quite wild. And I'll, you know, and I'll also just always go back to the fact that even if you do have a hard experience through this, you learn, if you, you learn so much about yourself, you also make friendships that you would never have. And those friendships are truly lifelong lasting because you're so bonded through this experience. So everyone has, even though it might not seem like it, everyone has a win coming out of this experience. It's, there might be a lot of hardship. There might be a lot of challenges. But if you look closely, like you have a win from this experience, no matter what your story is. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and, and God, you guys have huge win after win and you seem so real. And that's why I loved your podcast so much is that it's two people that you can tell are in a relationship and the, the things that you're talking about, I think everybody kind of needs to hear. And, and I was wondering where you want this podcast to go in terms of topics and, you know, or even things that we were just talking about right now about negativity and stuff like that. These are like all things that can be mined in your heads as you continue this journey through the podcast. Where do you want it to go? Yeah, I, I think I just want to, I want to share beautiful stories that are inspiring, that inspire people to, to give love a chance to have faith to keep fighting for love if they're in a relationship or 
to to keep looking for it if they're not yeah, because and fighting for self love too yeah you know, it's a b- thing. because it can be yeah that's true mm-hmm. you know i think that's a big thing too um and being in a really bad relationship sometimes it's it's uh there is a point where you got to leave and and that's beautiful too and that's like the self love like mm-hmm. you know if you're in a relationship where the other person it does not love you and is hurting you or you're you're being hurt like that's that is beautiful that's a beautiful love story as well um so uh i think those are the kind of stories that that i i I hope to share is just people's journeys of, of love and um and family yeah and i think you know our world just to add on to that our world is so hyper focused on the hot new topic and you know even in our world of reality tv talking about all of the you know the controversial things that are going on and da 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 da. and we're not our podcast isn't seeking to be you know a recap of all of those things and to try to get um volatility kind of stirred up. Like we're really looking to inspire and put more love into the world. I think the world really needs that right now. So that's really where, uh, that's my biggest hope for our podcast is that people to, to have like a place to go listen to goodness and, and there's goodness and challenges. It's not always going to be roses, you know, and we'll, we'll talk about challenges too, but that's my hope for it. Yeah. There's a lot of condemnation on the internet. Uh, and <laughs> what? Uh, what are you talking about, Zach? What? Yeah, and I, I think that that you know, we we hope to be a space that um, doesn't condemn mm-hmm. and and that can build can kind of tear down. yeah can can build up people, but also can look at and and show sides of people that are complex and that yeah. you know, good, good people can do bad things. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and that doesn't mean they can't continue um, or can't become better people. And uh, yeah, that, I mean, that's our hope. Well, no, I mean, I, I've been really lucky lately to talk to some uh, guests that have really kind of filled me with hope. And I think that's really so good for the audience to hear because, yeah, we are so attracted to the negativity. We are so into the minutia of who did wrong and how can we hate this person. And you have to, you know, really give people that flip side of how good things can be and how amazing it is to watch true love stories on these shows. You don't want to just see things fall apart. You want to see people thrive and survive and find that special special person. Um, so I love that you brought that up because I, I feel that every day, you know, do you, you go online and it's always, who's the new person to hate? Who's the new thing to hate? And sometimes we forget about who's the new person to love, who's the new person to champion, which that's why I think you're in this really nice hope scroll pocket of people that can give all of us hope in our everyday lives. Now, I did want to talk about before, you know, as we, I think I got a little bit more time here. Since you are the success story of Love is Blind season four, we just had Love is Blind season seven. And you guys, have you watched oh, the entire... Okay. One sec. We're not, we're not the success story. There were three. Well, no, no, no. Stories. I'm the success story <laughs> I'm talking to right now. That is a success story. I know you're one of like the people that I think yeah. we constantly see thriving in terms of building a family, having yeah. this child, having this podcast. So you're a perfect representative that we can point to. Okay. Um <laughs> but I love that I love that you're standing up for all of the. It's not even just you. You're like there's so many. Which, by the way, then who, in your opinion, are those other success stories? Well, I mean, Chelsea and Kwame and Brett and Tiff. Uh, you know, they are they are beautiful success who stories. Got married, right? Yeah. It's not up to us to define if someone else's marriage is good or bad, or if that's their person. So, to me, everyone who got married is well, a success. Can, story. can I say though? I, I believe that. People who didn't get married are also sometimes success stories. There are there are seasons um, where there are sometimes for whatever reason a match happens, and they really you know didn't realize that they were not compatible. And uh, I I can think of that. You know we watch both the international version of Love Is Blind and the um, and the local or the U- U.S. version. And uh, I can just think I'm not going to say this, but there's certain relationships where I'm like. I really don't think that these two are meant to be together. And, and when they find it's also not up to us to like, right. Well, they find it too. 
you know? Yeah. And, and, and I, okay. I, yeah, I mean, that's why I'm not saying things, yeah. but I'm saying some, sometimes it's not a failure, saying right? Saying no at the altar can be because, a good thing. Because, because, you know, when you get, when you get engaged or when you get in a relationship, even not even engaged, right? You start a relationship, you're, you're going to fail along the way. That's part of the journey. And that, and just because the first person you date, like I'm thinking like you start at 18, right? Your first boyfriend or girlfriend um, doesn't work out. That's not a failure, right? Like you, that's part of the journey. And, and so a lot of, a lot of these stories, like, you know, to just say that the people who get married are successes. I think that that's a misrepresentation of, of, of like the journey of love. As far as the experiment though, the experiment is testing those things and I hear where you're coming from. I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I, maybe we don't see it quite the same way, but I, I feel like, um, sometimes, uh, a relationship not working is a success, you know, stay, totally know stay, stay yeah. in a broken relationship. It's that's, a that's a, like, so you have to like put things into perspective. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a, it's an important reminder because a lot of us, like we say, we go to the negative and everything. So it's easy to look at these things as failures instead of looking at them as the life lessons that lead you to knowing yourself better and then eventually knowing the person that you wind up with so you can be a really solid partner. So yeah, they are success stories in a, in a sense, which is such a great way to frame it. Um, in season seven, we had this finale episode and we had this very painful scene, you know, Marissa and Ramsey's, um, you know, they, you know, obviously, I didn't think as you're speaking and you're watching, I didn't think that they were going to wind up together. Was that your thought as well while you were watching the show? And you don't know them personally, but when you're watching, what did you think? I I thought they were going to end up together. Yeah. I, I really? Were, I, yeah, I did too. I, I think that they had some very obvious chemistry and she was a lot more verbal than him throughout this whole thing. And just, she could just tell she loved him so much. Um, they looked so good together. I I thought that they were going to end up together. I really did. It was shocking to see. That. I just felt he was so hesitant in certain ways throughout, and I just thought their worldview didn't line up completely, which is mm -hmm. and Ram that seemed very much on Ramsey's. So uh, to me, it was a very painful scene. But I still, I kind of thought that that to ha that for me personally was how it would end. But mm -hmm. I'm really interested to see that you really thought they were going to go the distance. I think that we are just so keenly aware that there's so many conversations that happen off camera, like they can't include everything. And so I think I'm being keenly aware of that. And just the sense I got from them, I thought that maybe they were going to end up together. I do agree. There were some definitely some foundational um, beliefs that were not aligned that I would personally struggle to overcome to be together. But I, she, she was so in it for him that I just thought like, she was like, okay, I'm going to like accept this about him and just, we're going to make it work. Um, but yeah, it was really sad. I cried. I cried when they were Zach, did you, Zach, did you cry? <laughs> I, I think I did. A little, bit. A little teary eye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you were hosting the reunion, what would you want to ask them? What would you want to know about that relationship? Because we're about to see the reunion and I'm always curious, you've been through a reunion yourselves with Nick and Vanessa. What would you want to ask them? I think I would ask Ramses like when he actually did know it wasn't going to work. You know, I'd really want to give him the opportunity to even maybe if it's something he hadn't shared with her, you know, tell her that. Um, I think that would be key to understand where things kind of started to fall apart. Cause you hear him reassuring her kind of like, even with the differences in beliefs, you kind of hear him reassuring her and reassuring her and reassuring her. So when did that actually happen where he wasn't yeah. there? Yeah, I feel like it happened potentially earlier and like to your point earlier about saying that Zach was always so honest and upfront. And I was wondering with Ramses, if this is the same thing as if, you know, he was almost trying to convince himself and maybe not being potentially honest with himself at times. Totally. And it can be so scary to say no to someone. It's even if it's hard to break up with someone, it's so hard. And, you know, it, it's not to say it was what I would have done, but I can see how someone would be like afraid, you know, and then they get wrapped up in something and then they're not, you know, sharing what's on their mind. But this is such an important, 
experiment and situation that you need to, when you're having thoughts, you need to just say them and be brave about it. That's kind of my take. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I would, I would just ask, uh, I'd just ask him, what do you regret and what do you wish you had done differently? Um, yeah. And I think, you know, the past is the past at this point and why it didn't happen, you know, it, I think it, it it doesn't matter as much, and I don't know if we'll ever know. You know, only mm-hmm. only only he knows why he did what he did deep down. Yeah, uh, so I'm just glad he didn't take her to the altar. I that would have been yeah. Oh gosh, yeah that that would I mean that's a new you know people are talking about that trend, and I think Bliss and I both really like that the couples. Mm-hmm. Who are knows are deciding. The second you know, before you don't they marry get someone, don't be with I them. know because that the altar yeah. reveal that they used to do that was even more painful. I'm like, you're gonna have nightmares for the rest of your life. It still happens, yeah, you know. Totally. It's, it still happens. I mean, it didn't happen with this season, mm-hmm. but um, or the last season. Did it happen with the last season? Were there any knows at the altar last season? Six. We had it. We had it in UK. There was a no at the altar. Yeah. Yeah. There was um, a no with AD and Clay at the altar. Yeah. And I, I think. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it did happen last season too. Uh, so, I I think for some that was hard to watch too. Um, that was really hard to watch. Yeah, I think mm. that she's the, thriving now. She's yeah, thriving. the new the, <laughs> the the trend of trying to end it there early. But I would say that you have to understand it is such a short period of time mm-hmm. for people mm-hmm. uh, to be to making a decision to get married. That sometimes they really do need oh, that that, time. that oh yeah okay it's all on the line what are you gonna do um bliss and i decided before we we got there the we, night before yeah but we still <laughs> we, sincerely we probably took about six hours weighed the pros and cons we looked less at, time than everyone else our engagement is the shortest ever in love is blind history and yes it is was it, we needed every was minute it, what, 14 days 14 days Every minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh god! It was. It was. I was it four or five days from when I met you to when I proposed. I think it was four days. Five days. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we got good news. We're we're still here. We're t- um. I we have two more couples I wanted to talk about. Ashley and Tyler. They did get married. Now, this is somebody that that you know, uh, Tyler. There's a lot of stuff that's come up about him. This is like perfect reality show example of people sleuthing. What did you think about Ashley and Tyler getting married? So I I would say two things. Um, the the first is I'm I I really liked them you know I I'm really glad that they found each other I think there is a genuine love between the two of them and I'm really happy and the other side of it I think where a lot of this you know it it obviously got shown um, but I I think it's it's frustrating to see um, children getting pulled into yeah this yeah. and and it's almost like a maturity thing um with with like the the way you know the internet's the internet people a lot of people feel like they have no moral responsibility being on the internet but i i've seen i've seen things where people are making internet memes that are taking pictures of these kids and they're i'm like what what are you doing and and then and then they use that pretext and they say well uh they shouldn't have posted these pictures if they didn't want it up there it's like yeah who cares like that's you're 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 taking pictures of these children to yeah i'm i'm i've been really frustrated to see the way that the internet Mm -hmm. has been kind of going on this it's it's a it's a really it's a really sad thing to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, you know, like I, I'm happy for them too. I think that finding love is such a beautiful thing and all the things that Zach and I were talking about grace and all of that, like we're not here to judge anyone's relationship. You know, I think that you can tell they really love each other and I hope the best for them. Have any of these couples reached out to you? 
to get advice and how to handle things post pod and post like, cause I was just wondering, like you'd be perfect people to talk to for some of these couples. You know, I think that's something where I would love to see that more, you know, obviously we can't know yeah. who's married before, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I, there was a way that we could like, we would sign an NDA or something and, you know, they could come talk to us. I would love for, for that. Cause I think that, you know, there's only a certain amount of people that have gone through this experience. There's only even smaller amount that have actually gotten married. And I think being able to lean on each other and have people to talk to would be great. So I hope to, I hope, you know, maybe one day that can happen. Yeah. We're, we're both always open books for anyone from the show that wants to talk with us, mm -hmm. anyone that goes through the experience. Um, and that's couples and non couples, you know, your like phone lines are open. You, <laughs> yeah, uh, our DMs are open. <laughs> your DMs are open. The, your, your pods are open to Pod be group. able to, I, I think that's, that's no, I mean, and then, then finally, um, Garrett and Taylor, who I think a lot of people, you know, just truly loved this couple. And, and I got to tell you, have you noticed Garrett's glow up? Oh yeah. It's called the wife glow up. <laughs> the wife glow up. He's got the hair I and mean, he was already a good looking guy, but now he's got the swagger look about him. And I was like, wow, Garrett, good for you. Love can just change you, glow you up. It, yeah. I think that's when it's when you know it's good love is when you get a little glow up. Right, Zach? Yeah. Can we talk? I do about want to point out Zach has Zach's hair is coiffed perfectly right now. <laughs> Zach has the wife glow up as well. It's a he rare, did. rare thing that my hair works. <laughs> yeah. Um, Can we talk about the fact that their parents were both married on the 13th mm -hmm. and they got, they got married it. on the 13th. Yeah. I sometimes I, the pods, just these magical things uh, yeah. happen and it's beautiful. And then the so tattoos, cool. mm -hmm. the, the tattoos, <laughs> they were so meant to be. I, I love that. I them. felt when we watched that, I, I felt such a, a deep connection to their love story because in, in a lot of ways I, I saw a lot of, of, of the things that happened with bliss and I, mm -hmm. like there were just these signs mm -hmm. that just seemed to be just telling Everywhere. us. That, yeah. 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 I mean, it, uh, it was one of those things where I saw them initially and I had such a good vibe from them like you guys, but it was really interesting to watch that. And of course there's always hiccups and speed bumps as you speak of, but I was like, Oh, this is a no brainer for me. And I'm really excited to hear them speak about, you know, th this time period after the pods before we knew about it what that's been like for them because i feel like that's the other part that is just exciting for the audience is catching up you know mm -hmm. finding out where and how strong their love has grown uh in the interim mm -hmm. yeah no it's going to be super exciting to see everyone um, talk about everything and you know hopefully see everyone together and it's cool yeah, well, really, I, really I want to see the one couple, the one couple that didn't make it that, that then took the trip to Miami <laughs> together and then broke it off. I'm, I'm blanking on their names right now, but that's the couple Le that I want to see. Brittany and Leo. Leo. Brittany. Yeah. <laughs> I want to, that's who I want to see. I want to know every piece of that Miami trip that they then broke it off of. And he spoke about it like, oh, it was great, da, da, da. But I want to hear it from her and her, yeah. hear her experience. That'll yeah. be good to hear. Yeah. I, 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 I wouldn't mind having Leo on the podcast, honestly. Oh, my I'm, God. You got, well, would you, would you be open to that? I mean, it's like a oh, yeah. positive, like, I would love for you guys, because that's what I'm talking I, about. These conversations that you could have with these people, it, we would love to hear those. I yeah. think I think Leo has a really good story to tell, you know, and I, I'd love to hear about his journey of love. Um, I, he actually I, th I think he's a really good guy. Um, and uh, yeah, he, you know, he, he got a lot of heat this season. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I, I, I would love to have him on our podcast. Yeah. We're okay. And so and, and just to, you guys don't like make any kind of appearance at the reunion, do you? I don't know. I don't think so. Are we there? No, no, you can't even tell. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I, just I don't know. You have to wait and see. I don't know. I just, all I just wanted to... tired parents. You know, everything's a nah. <laughs> tired, tired pair. You got? Are you kidding me? You don't need. Um. Uh. And then finally, since you're done watching Love Is Blind, what are we? I mean, we're, we're obviously raising Galileo. You guys are sleep deprived. You've got the podcast. You've got all of these things. What What shows do you watch now when you're able to even watch shows now that Love Is Blind is over? Okay, Zach is like bliss. I do not get this, but I'm determined to get him to get it. I love the Great British Baking Show. Oh, so it's so much. good, Zach. It's I so, you would love think you would 
it. I love English humor. It's so funny. No. <laughs> Wait, Zach, why are you scared of this? Uh, by the way, I understand. My girlfriend watched that show and I didn't want, think I would want to watch it at first, but it's so funny. It's a, it, You get into it. I'm telling you, you will totally dig it. It's a comfort show. Mm -hmm. I can't. I Why? tried. I tried. You tried? I'm going to keep tried. trying. It's yeah. my goal. I'm going to keep trying. Um, we love, I love that one. We, um, we were actually at the Dancing with the Stars. Oh um, man, that was fun. Oh yeah. How was that experience? Ago. It was so fun. So we actually watched that. What a his really beautiful. What a historic night. Mm -hmm. Oh my it's gosh. Beautiful. I, you know, I had no idea what we were, we were going into, but, um, seeing, um, Derek dance. Uh, that was, that was, yeah, that was amazing. Oh my gosh. With his lady. Yeah. That was, I mean, I feel like that's probably going to go down as one of the greatest dances that they've ever had on the show. Oh, and yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. Um, we also were kind of, we're kind of into watching Shogun right now. Well, I hear that's incredible. It won so many Emmys. Uh, it's supposed to be epic. Okay. It, it's really good. Um, it, it's too much banking. It's kind of like <laughs> a Game of Thrones style. That's what I, that's, yeah, yeah it's, so good so far. it's like a Game of Thrones style story, but we have time to watch it. We I, subtitles, you have to be really concentrated. So. I, I can't, <laughs> I can't eat and look at the subtitles <laughs> at the same time. You probably shouldn't be eating and watching TV anyway, but yeah. No, it's, <laughs> that's probably a bad habit we should work on. Yeah. But when you're exhausted. And you're like, I don't uh, want let's just zone out and eat. Well, I mean, that's what I'm, we're we're on Friday right now. I'm in Charleston for a wedding, so I've got like a wedding festivities. What do you guys have this weekend? What are Zach and Bliss? We have Galileo. What is a normal weekend out of the pods for you guys consist of? We have a bingo night going on this yeah, weekend. Yeah, we have bingo tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a bingo night. Amazing. We're going out with my friends to do Halloween bingo. Um, honestly, we we spend a lot of time walking, taking our dog and the, you know, Galileo to the park and hanging out with my mom. Our mom is our nanny and she lives with us. So that's really wonderful. And your mom um, has great stories, a great story too on the, yeah. the podcast as well that you will, he I mean, really, truly incredible. And that's what's so amazing to hear family stories as well. Um, and you get to watch actually one of their walks uh, I was talking about before we started. It, there's a video element to this. What is that thing you're on? It's a, not a skateboard, Zach, but what is that thing? Oh, it's, it's called, called a, a one wheel. A one wheel. I love it. They're like one spinning wheel. all around her while she's pregnant. And I was like, what? He's on a one wheel, just like doing tricks and stuff. <laughs> oh, it's it's so natural to me. I've, I've been doing it for so long now that I've um, tried it a few times and I broke my toe, not on the one wheel, but then I was like, Nah, I'm, I'm good for a while. Yeah. Do you want to tell the broke toe story? <laughs> how you broke your toe? It on the wall. It wasn't anything cool. I've never. You broke it on a wall? She you walked know how, into a like, wall. On, there's beams built into a wall and we'll be raised a little bit from the wall itself and i somehow my pinky toe got caught on that and it was actually a couple of two halloweens ago but anyway it was it was never a the lone biles I, uh, should the Olympics is <laughs> I should just lie and say i was doing something cool you know yeah, yeah but i and then she quit one wheeling she <laughs> yeah. just gave up on it I'm just like i'm gonna take a picture <laughs> about pregnant and i can't do it when I'm pregnant. come on we can't raise a quitter come on you got to get back <laughs> yeah. on that one wheel this, you know what i, I gotta get back on it Th this was meant to happen this conversation because now i can get her back on the one wheel <laughs> and hey wait wait if you get her back on the one wheel if she agrees to go you got to agree to give the great british baking show uh yeah. bake off another chance Boom. i think that's a fair trade-off okay Thank you. all right also right. on netflix by the way so we, love is blind is tied right in there okay. and and folks I want to tell you this new podcast that we've been talking about, you need to go subscribe right now. There's already like, and these are kind of like a bite, like some mini episodes, bigger episodes, video episodes. Uh, it's called Blind Love with Zach and Bliss. I'm going to ask you, like I said at the beginning, go leave it a five-star rating. Um, go subscribe. If you are new parents, you're going to love this. If you're older parents, you're going to love this. If you have not had a kid yet, you are going to love this because I think we love them. And as Zach says, they are not the only shining example, but they are a great example of finding love on reality television, which I think uh, is so great to see and, and is what we need to see more of in this day and age. So I hope to speak to you guys again someday, but just congratulations yeah. on the pod, your marriage, your child and everything. I really appreciate your time. Thank yeah. you so much. It was so great chatting with it, you. It's been a real honor. Thank you so much for having us on.